Hi, this is Sandra, Source Outreach Ministries, bringing to you today another um, one of the 12 demonic spirits. Today we're going to be looking at the spirit of infirmity. Okay. And today it's talking about, um, it says, Perry Stone says, that's the number one spirit attacking Christians defeating the spirit of infirmity, okay? It says a person with this spirit will experience a variety of medical issues. For example, it can cause syndromes without any evident causes, also bodily disorders, allergies, and identity crisis are just a few ways the spirit can manifest. If you're constantly having medical issues that the doctor cannot resolve, you may be under attack from this spirit. OK, it's like people that uh, are always feeling sick and they go to the doctor and the doctor has no clue what's going on. They run all these tests and nothing is showing. There's a possibility then that you may have this spirit of infirmity, of sickness. And the only way to get rid of it is for being to be delivered. OK, you need to find a church that does deliverance uh, or um, a group of people that do deliverance and that you can tell them that you want to try to. You want to cast this one out and they will help you to do this. Okay. All right. Next slide. All right. This is an interesting one. This is um, in the Bible. Luke 13, 11 through 13 of infirmity, right? And it says, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, right? Because some people are sick for many years and was bent over and could in no way rise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hand on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Because when I did my deliverance in uh, 2021 of all the stuff that was inside of me that I wasn't aware of, and I'm a Christian and I was saved uh, in 2011. And that's when I started giving my life to Jesus and working the path of what he had chosen for me before I was even born. And I didn't know I had these things in me. And when I went to this process, it was quite amazing. I felt, I felt free of bondage. I was just felt really, uh, really good, but really exhausted because it took a while to get these things out. Probably, I don't know, maybe 30, 30 minutes to an hour of working on me because I am in my elderly ages. And all my life, before I gave my life to Jesus, I was living in the world. And I was doing a lot of things I shouldn't have been doing, okay? And so I had a lot of openings and portals that these demons were able to get inside of me. And plus ancestral curses that from my family for the women, okay? So we had a lot of things to work on. So uh, I encourage you to listen to my Overcoming the Flesh series and... Um, and listen to all of it, and then listen to this one. These are the most, um, uh, the, the ones that people rate the highest that are happening. Um, and, and then I encourage you, if you're not saved, get saved first, because you, you need to get saved and fill your, uh, activate the Holy Spirit in you, and Jesus Christ will be in you, because you don't want to come in there as a non-believer. And then if you go and ask for deliverance, you don't have Jesus. Then what happens to all those spirit, that spirit goes and brings back some more and it comes in because you're still open and vulnerable. So you need to get saved. You need to accept the Holy Spirit. You need to ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit to come on you, to guide you and take care of you. And, and then go ahead and get a deliverance, okay, of these things to see what's in you. It's quite amazing. My daughter did it. A friend of mine did it. And we've had... Um, experienced a lot of it, even when they made the movie that said, um, come out in Jesus name. Uh, we were at the movie house. And after the movie was over, the guy, uh, Craig Locke, told us all to stand up and uh, to uh, say some uh, prayers about casting out demons, right? Because maybe when I did mine, I didn't get everything. But I but that day it seemed like I did. But there was a young lady in front of me that was starting to manifest and manifest is when you're starting to like shake or your head rolls back or things like that. And the Lord just told me to go to her and start praying for her. And next thing you know, there was some other girls that, that I knew that had helped 
last year deliver me um were there thank god and my daughter and we proceeded to help this young girl to be set free and it's just quite amazing so this can even happen in a movie theater <laughs> so uh god is so good god is awesome okay and like this lady 18 years when she finally met jesus and he said he set her free because you have to say come out in the name of jesus only through jesus you can't set anyone free you don't have that ability but jesus does through you okay i hope you understand what i was saying okay and and this here says we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered and when you um, get the Holy Spirit once you're saved and you get the Holy Spirit of the fire of the Holy Spirit on you and you there are gifts right so you could you can ask for the gift of speaking tongues and that's what this is talking about that the spirit when we don't know what to pray for or what to say in our language then we can start speaking in the tongues that has been given to us and that is being uttered up into heaven the spirit is sending up to heaven exactly what we need and there is also interpretation of of the tongues that you could uh, ask for and um and then you might know what you're saying but in, in that case uh you might just do tongues and then you just speak in the holy spirit and then uh the lord will prevail over you and help you and then it also says all our infirmities whatever they are are just opportunities for god to display his gracious work in us okay because when we become a child of God when we are saved we are now serving him instead of the world he had a plan for us before we were even consumed in our parents and so that plan gets activated he speaks to you the Holy Spirit speaks to you and shares with you that plan and you start doing that plan like like I have been doing for the last going on nine years and you then get more in tune with the, with the Holy Spirit speaking to you, more in tune with what you need to do. You read the Bible every day, you study the Bible, and you be amongst friends that are like-minded, that are also believers, and know about deliverance, and know about the Holy Spirit, and know about speaking in tongues. You get, those people come into your life, and God just, it's just an amazing plan that God has for us that it will manifest. Instead of, um, demons manifesting to you from the world, you're going to be um, shown uh, mentors, teachers, uh, like-minded people. You're just going to continue to learn and continue to grow in the Lord. Okay. So, and then down here, it says, command all infirmity spirits to release you in Jesus Christ's name. You have to say that and lose truth, victory, and divine health. So you want to uh, say dear lord jesus i cast this i ask in jesus name to cast this this demon of infirmity out of me today in the name of jesus i lose this from me you know because you could do self-deliverance but it's better to be with some people uh to get it done uh because sometimes the 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 demon the spirit is they know they know way more than we know okay they've been around for thousands of years and if you don't have really believe that or have that going on for you and you haven't had it studied that much or experienced doing it delivers that much it may take more work so it's better to go amongst people who already have been doing this for years and they know exactly how to deal with the spirit of the demon that's in you and to make it come out okay so you just can't just watch this video and think you can cast out um demons you know uh I'm not sure if you can, I, I might, you might can, but I would say find yourself a deliverance, um, people, a church, a group of people, or email me and I can see if I, who I can find for you, okay? Or you can go listen to some people online like um, Alexander, um, uh, I'm sorry, it's Isaiah Saldivar, and, and there's many other people that, um, that are out there to help you. There's books to read and that kind of stuff, but you really need to study and, and prepare to do this deliverance, okay? All right. And in closing, we have um, a short video for you to watch, okay? Here we go.
Do you see everything the spirit of infirmity can do to you mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually? The intention of its work is to ultimately separate us from God. In other words, it wants to destroy our witness and faith in the promises of God. Infirmities can stifle your efforts to evangelize. God appears powerless according to what you see, how you feel, or what you think. The spirit of infirmity lies in wait for access and permission to operate mostly through lack of knowledge. This is especially so when you do not read or study the scriptures. You are open season for access if you lack spiritual covering. So, it is important to align yourself with a ministry that teaches and builds upon scriptural foundation in your spirit. The spirit of infirmity takes advantage of those who harbor unforgiveness, commit acts of disobedience to authority, practice witchcraft, or have ungodly soul ties. Associations, entanglements, or time spent in environments conducive to sin is another point of access. When the spirit of infirmity attacks physically, there is a loss of energy, zeal, or enthusiasm for good health and well-being. Mentally, the person believes what is occurring is supposed to happen, and it is only going to get worse. Thoughts tend to project a negative outlook on life. There is a demeanor that rejects help or the resources necessary for improvement or change. Socially, attitudes or mood will vary from explosive anger to deep sadness or grief. And morally, there will be a tendency, disposition, or attachment to inordinate affection or perversions. Luke 13.10 said, The woman with the spirit of infirmity was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. This meant that her body was bent over, turned, crooked, and twisted. It was possibly contorted or arched. She had no ability, method, or technique for changing her physical condition. Apparently, her health was beyond the help of physicians. Some people are bowed over mentally. This makes them feel subdued, suppressed, or overwhelmed by a negative thought life. They have difficulty setting goals or making decisions that will yield significant adjustments. When financially challenged, a person might feel powerless to affect the system that controls money and wealth. Morally afflicted people tend to be governed or influenced by a warped, sometimes distorted sense of what is good and decent. The spirit of infirmity prevents lifting or pulling yourself up. It will seem impossible to emerge from the situation, to improve or advance to a better level or condition in life is out of reach. It can leave its victim unable to aid, assist, or support others. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Come back next week for our next lesson. God bless you. This is Sandra from Source Outreach Ministries. Bye-bye.